So, Kim from Sassy Jack Stitchery, Yonder Ways, that's what we're going to call this, this little video series. Um, and I explained in another video why we call it that. So, I hope you're enjoying that southern slang that we've got going on there. But, welcome back. Uh, thank you to everybody who's been watching, who watched the other videos. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for the comments. They were all very helpful and very encouraging, so I appreciate that. I'm working through the, um, the, the, we won't call them giveaways, but the giveaways from my last individual video, and uh, there were a lot of comments, so I appreciate that. You guys are pretty excited. That's great. Um, I wanted to go ahead and shoot the video tonight, and I'll finish those up, and, and I'll edit in the, the random drawing at the end of the video, so you'll get to see that, but thank you very much for all the birthday wishes. That was just wonderful, and thank you for all the neat comments. I really liked hearing about you guys, about where you're from and what you're doing and what you thought was interesting. And thank you for the questions. I'll try to hit some of those this week and we'll just keep doing that as we go forward. So certainly if you have um, questions, comments, feedback, please feel free to leave that in the comments field on the, on the YouTube video. I appreciate that. Always very helpful. One of the things that people, a few people noted, not everybody, was that it was hard to hear um, a volume issue. So I did actually have an external microphone the last time I did this, but I didn't have it. I couldn't figure out how to set it up. I'm going to count it, Jim. <laughs> Not an electronical engineer. So I have worked on that and I had to order a few little toolies and hopefully that's better for you this time. So, um, if not, you know, let me know. We'll just keep plugging away at that and keep working at it. But I just wanted to thank everybody. Um, last weekend we had class here with Beth Seal of Summerhouse Stitchworks. And I think a lot of you guys got to see that video. If you didn't, you can watch that. It was fun. Um, <clears throat> but we had about a little less than 30 people here and, uh, some of them had watched the video. And so, it was really neat because when they came in on Saturday, which was my actual birthday, a lot of people walked up and, and, you know, leaned down right in front of me and said, happy birthday, Kim, or gave me a card or something. It was just neat. I got a lot of gummy bears, which <laughs> I have eaten most of them. <laughs> so that's not really a good thing. I've really got to get on my treadmill. Um, and, uh, you know, it was just a good day. I have found very few, very few better ways to spend a birthday than with my stitching friends. It's just been... Um, just really wonderful for me. The first time I got to do that, life had been a little bit challenging that year. It was my, I want to say my 40th birthday. It's been a long time ago now. And um, I went on a retreat and I was with some good friends and I didn't really, some of them I didn't really know too well. Some of them I did, but they surprised me and um, with a little cake and it was just really great. I've never forgotten it. <clears throat> so Brenda and Claire and Susan, thank you for that first stitchy friend birthday that you gave me and Penny. It was just fantastic. And so every year, if I'm lucky enough to spend it with my friends, I appreciate that. The first two years of the shop, it was on stitch night. So two years in a row, somehow it was, on, it was on a stitch night, I think, or at least a day that we had people in here stitching. And so that was pretty fun too. And especially the first year, because I opened the shop at the end of June and uh, my birthday's at the beginning of August. So, you know, there were a lot of people in here, pretty much everybody that was here. I had only known a few weeks and they made it a really special day again so that was great so it was fun um so anyway thank you for all that i hope all of you who've had birthdays this month it's been a lot of fun and, and the ones that have them coming up i'm sure it'll be a good one and uh we'll just all hope for a really good year ahead that's the important thing so um class this weekend was great we made something i haven't finished i had some help i'm gonna admit it um this was the class project this is part of it. There was another part. There's a little scissor block and I don't have my stitching done for that. So I've got to work on that this week and I'll show it to you another time. But you know, it's going to be, I have to be honest with you. It's probably going to be very rare that you see a finish from me. <laughs> you might see a lot of starts. Um, now I'm a serial starter and I am not ashamed. I really enjoy the hopefulness of starting a new project. And I'm sure there's a lot of you that are with me. But when I get a finish, I get excited about it. So I had it all stitched and ready. But, um, you know, even though I had a lot of help here in the shop that day, I was doing a lot of running around. And it was a Saturday, so we were busy. And so I missed a lot of things. And my good friend Allie, who um, worked here up until today, very sad. Today was her last day. She's moving to Baltimore. Um, she was sitting beside me, and she did a lot of the putting together. So I think she actually painted my, my candlestick. And she actually attached um, the pin cushion for me. I put the buttons on and 
anyway it was it's really actually even more special to me because she helped me um, with it so I'll always have that to treasure it but beautiful project and if you guys have a chance to take a class with Beth Seal of Summerhouse Stitchworks definitely do that um, next year here Beth will be back and she's next year in 2020 she'll be here in November um, in 2021 I think we jumped back to August so we were scheduling out pretty far now I have learned as a new shop owner that um, with the growth of the industry which we have all of you guys to thank for that so everybody who's watching things on social media who's posting things on social media thank you thanks for you know all the love and energy and and things that you put back into this craft of ours it has caused a tremendous amount of growth and I didn't see that coming when I opened the shop I was gonna open the shop if it was just me sitting in here every day all by myself I didn't expect that to happen but I certainly didn't expect to encounter the growth that we've had so <clears throat> all of you who put your heart into it who take the time to do these things um, to help people learn and see and and love what we do you know thank you for that it's a lot it's a lot I think people think these things just kind of magically happen well they don't there's a lot that goes into it um, but thanks to everybody who who gives something back I appreciate that and you know I'm certainly open to anything you'd like to see me do differently or do more of or do less of so um, I did get my hair did for you today <laughs> I said that wrong get my hair did for you today maybe I did say that right it's just a weird thing to say um, but the place I get my hair cut is just right down the street and so I run out get it cut and come back and every time I'm walking back down Main Street I kid you not I feel like Farrah Fawcett <laughs> from the neck up at least and I feel like people are looking at my hair because it just looks so good so today I knew that I was going to get my hair cut and I was like oh today's a floss tube day <laughs> no matter what and um, so here I am on Friday night you know recording this video and hopefully we'll get posted on Saturday for you but um, it's always fun to, to walk down the street after you uh, get your hair cut um, it is for me anyway I like going in there and getting it done so I did mention that Allie was leaving in that little monologue there and we we're bummed about that but I'm super happy for Allie she is um, you know she is 24 years old and I always knew that she was gonna have to spread her wings and leave the nest one day and Allie's been with us for a year and a half now um, and she's been a big part of helping the shop grow she's done a lot of our charting actually she's done all of our charting for our sampler line and for some of our original stuff she um, has done a lot of the website stuff she's just been kind of a right hand woman for a while so we'll miss her but we're super excited that she's you know you know going to the next phase of life we all have to do that and I think Baltimore you know is getting somebody good so I know there's a good shop up there one of their people was in here a week or so ago and they were you know definitely laying the groundwork to try to recruit Miss Allie so I don't know if she'll be able to do that or not because it's a little bit outside of town but um, you know if if you can get her you should get her she's good um, she's gonna keep doing charting for us so she'll still be around and she does good work on that and she does our design work in InDesign which is actually you know it's a pretty big part of the process I mean I think a lot of people just think about the charting but there's the whole publication side that goes with that so um, she'll keep doing some of that for us and we're excited about that but we wish her just super super great wonderful things in life and um, you know she's she's it's hard it's hard to leave a job and, and go somewhere new and different um, but she's got two weeks at Penland I think Penland or Campbell I forget there's so many craft schools around here um, right now before she leaves so she'll actually be back in the shop so we haven't said our goodbyes yet but um, you know anyway you, you won't be talking to her on the phone too much anymore maybe once but maybe she'll come back and help us some we'll, we'll look for that um, so we thank Allie and we wish her the best and um, it's really neat when you have a friend do some stitching for you so or putting together for you in my case so if you get a chance to to take advantage of your friends <laughs> you should do that um, so on the note of publication we did something fun this week that I want to share with you and and I know that we're not the first to do it um, but I've been wanting to do it for a while and we got it done and I'm excited about it um, but we made this really cool sticker so um, the it's it's a label it's actually a sticker 
so you actually peel it off and you can put it on the back of your stitched work and so I know that um, other people have done stickers and there are some cards and samplers I know that Hands Across the Sea gives a card out like a bookmark card and there are samplers and um, if you place an order from us with pretty much anything in it most things are going to get one of these um, for the next while we're just really excited about it and if you need more than one we'll put them up for sale um, they're pretty reasonable but um, it's big you can see it's like four by six inches so but it needed to be big so that you could get your information on it the squirrel is pretty neat I can't remember if I told you much about the logo animal but I talk about it most days here in the shop because invariably somebody will ask me about it but this image is um, an antique image um, an old image of a sewing machine and so this squirrel is actually a sewing machine and the needle comes down through his head and if you look at his tail it holds a thread bobbin and he's sewing and it's beautiful and I saw this when I was you know trying to get everything put together for the shop and I fell in love and um, and so I took it to a logo artist and I had them reinterpret it a little bit so the image itself is not copyrighted at this point because of its age but and we use it for a few things but I really wanted us to have our own logo and so we did that so if you notice our logo actually has a squirrel with the needle coming over his shoulder because I just didn't have the heart to put it through his head I didn't like that so so our squirrels needle Jack we named our squirrel Jack this past year although uh, Jack is not was not originally meant to be the name of the squirrel we named him Jack for our newsletter purposes and some other things um, Jack's needle comes over his shoulder his tail does still hold the thread bobbin but an interesting story about this sewing machine um, my husband Everett Ponder and I have been married um, just since 2016 we've been together for going on seven years and he can build anything he's built these big a-frame things behind me with the clear thing on the front for the charts he's built the walls that you see back on the other side of me with um, charts on it he'll build just about anything for me and so I ask him to build me this sewing machine and it is honestly truly the only time in seven years that he has said no and he did not hesitate to say no he said no really quick no I can't do it and I said what are you talking about I was just so shocked sewing machines are really hard to build apparently which is why this guy never got put into production so he although it's beautiful was too expensive to actually make into a sewing machine so he only ever existed as this beautiful antique image a blueprint actually um, and anyway I love him and so he he graces the first series of these stickers project stickers is what they are so you can put them on your um, your finished piece you can just stick it on the back you don't have to glue it or anything just stick it it's a really nice paper we had it printed on a really high quality paper so that you can write on it so it's actually very easy to write on and it's it's kind of thick it's got some heft to it it's not it's not a real it's not a cheap sticker it's a nice one um, and we did it with a local printer we try to stay local as much as we can and they're super excited to help us with it so um, we have 3,000 of these beautiful guys that will be giving out to you and maybe selling to you if you have to have more than one at a time. And then we might make some limited editions and use some other really neat images that we've gathered. Probably going to be of a squirrel or maybe an acorn or pumpkin or maybe all of those. But uh, anyway, I'm excited about this. I love this guy because I wanted to do it for a while. So I hope you enjoy getting it. A few of them have gone out in the mill. So you might... I don't know if you already have one I really just started putting them in yesterday so maybe by the time this airs somebody might open one on Saturday that has one in there but I hope you like it we like it and you know we do love to give you things we we do try to put something in the package you know we've had those little three inch measuring cards for a while um, and we usually put a needle in there all well although I will confess that lately we haven't had needles because I ran out of the bags and then I ran out of the time to make the needles because you know the wool felt has to get cut the needle has to get put into the wool felt that has to go into the bag along with the label that has to get made and get cut to put in there so every one of those needles that you guys have gotten or will get um, or do you get is hand put together by us um, take some energy and time but you know we just love doing it we feel like it should feel like a little gift to you so 
whatever you find in that package that you open up besides what you ordered i hope you enjoy it and if you don't if it's not your thing for whatever reason then just give it away it's really you know you can find somebody to give it to um you know have some stitching friends over and and divest of some of your extra things but anyway so i hope you like that we're super stoked about it and i wanted to show you we talked about this guy in the last video with beth um this was one of the things and it's in mylar sorry about that but this was one of the um one of the designs that she came out with at nashville market called in the modern organics line this one is radiant summer and there's one for every season and some of you have ordered those based on that video so thank you i hope you enjoy it it's fun it's a nice easy stitch well i mentioned in that video that i had stitched something and put it in a very special place and i did find a picture of it but when we were in class i actually found the stitch piece so i want to show you the stitch piece and then i'm going to actually videotape the finishing of the hoop and show you that i'm going to insert it for you i'm not going to do it right here on camera but i'm going to do that and insert it for you so that when you watch this you'll see it um, but i wanted to show it to you since i was lucky enough to find it so you can see it's it's pretty small guy Ooh, there's a needle see if you do put a needle in your fabric please do it like this put it up in the corner where you know it's not going to be in your framing because um lots of times just like this guy we put a needle in the fabric and we put it somewhere we walk away and it's in there for a long time and if you're in any humidity at all you know you might come back to a rust spot and rust spots are really hard to get out so just get in the habit just put it in the edge i know that you know we don't always put them away but you know put them in the edge um, don't put them in your mouth don't put them in your shirt <laughs> put them on a needle minder um, don't put them in the arm of your chair that irritates your husband don't put them in the floor that bothers your cat and if, if if you're like me it bothers your husband if he finds it put it in the edge of your fabric um, mine still fall out sometimes in my bags I'm I'm one of those shop owners that never has a pair of scissors and never has a needle I don't know it just happens so this one is called radiant summer and somewhere very shortly after you see this on the screen you'll see a little video and you'll get to watch me finish it um, I did stitch it with sulky threads, a single strand. This is Ada cloth. This is picture this plus Ada cloth, and I think it's Heartland. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a 16 count Ada. Um, it was a great fun stitch. So sulky threads are great. I'll put up a conversion for the sulky threads if you guys decide you want to do that um, for all of them. And, you know, I encourage you to try those sulky threads on anything anything that's 32 or 36 count you can do it on 28 count too but it really looks good on this one as you can see i'll give you a really close view <clears throat> so i want to show you also what i'm thinking about for finish this is a, just a very inexpensive wooden hoop and this little guy fits really nicely <clears throat> inside this hoop you don't want to use a great you know a good hoop an expensive hoop to do a finish like this i think this one this one's not even as cheap as you can get you can get a lot cheaper than this but this one's 450. um i'm going to finish him in here and i've got two different wool backings so we sell a lot of wool here <clears throat> this one is from a local dyer and it's called mountain wool and it's from Asheville, north carolina so this is one of my color options what you can see is very pretty with it I think it looks pretty nice with this one so could be this one that goes on the back another option see I'm making the most of my finishes here because <laughs> you're not gonna see a lot of them is this so this kind of matches the um, purples that I chose for it and this is also mountain wool it just happens to be the two that I picked up. We also sell Weeks Style Works wool, which they just do a beautiful, beautiful wool. So this is what this looks like by itself. Really pretty. Each piece is kind of individual. Um, this is this one. And we have lots of wool. So if you do rug cooking, you know, we definitely have wool for you. If you do wool applique, we have lots of wool. <clears throat> um... And then we use a lot for finishing, which is what we're doing here. Okay, 
So that is um, the Modern Organics finish, and, and uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing that. Um, somebody asked me to share some of our antiques and talk about that. <clears throat> I'm going to show you Mary Good, which is our chart that we just premiered. And we haven't really launched it. This will be kind of the launch for it. Um, we did a soft launch because I was pretty busy last weekend. So some people have, have it, have bought it. Um, and you guys will be really, I think, I think you might be the first to see it, to see the sampler itself up close. And I'll do a little video of it too and, and insert that. But I wanted to show you, um, I'll show you the sampler first. It's under glass. And then I will show you the fabric. So, <clears throat> just a real pretty, beautiful Adam and Eve. The thing that I love about this sampler are the, the skirts, the little grass covers on Adam and Eve. They look like little hula skirts to me. I can just sort of see them shimmying. <laughs> I just think it's fabulous. And how pink these little people are, because they remind me, <laughs> of me <laughs> so, <laughs> I uh, I don't get along with the Sun too well although I love it but um, so I, it's just a really beautiful sweet sampler um, so I hope I hope you guys you know will give this one a try if you're thinking about stitching a sampler it's just a great it's a great start because it's not too huge it's just a nice nice sampler um, I want to show you the fabric and the silks that go with this one so all right so the fabric that we are kidding her on is a week style works swigart parchment so we've talked about week style works before in some other forms um but it's important to know that this is this swigart base for week style works you'll see the orange selvage if you get something with a selvage on it it's a different hand than their normal fabric it's it's a it's a little bit tighter weave um <clears throat> this is a 40 count but it's just a gorgeous fabric i don't know how well the lot picks it up in here right now but just a really beautiful beautiful fabric and then these are these are the silks just gorgeous gorgeous silks um hard to see that but I will put up a little video for you guys for that but they're so pretty and these are Verisois silks and Verisois silks are a French a French silk <clears throat> and they're seven strand silk and these can be used on pretty much you know any count of fabric until you get up to 46 and some people do use a single strand on 46 it's a little bit thicker look to it um, and and that's fine if you like that a lot of times people will jump over once they get to 46 they jump over to 103 of Arisois. so I'll show you some of these some of those sometime too you can get to see those but that's Mary good <clears throat> and um, five of you have won that chart so i'm excited to tell you who's done that and uh, you'll see that at the end um and then i wanted to show you something that we were working on today and this is going to be a lot of you have seen this in the shop and you've loved it um this one we charted ourselves and we have put the publication together ourselves so um, and some of you have bought the little extract from it, a little card. This is Marianne Frame. She's gorgeous. And we had to take her out of the frame today. This is the antique. We had to take her out of the frame today so that we could um, check some thread colors. We were finalizing the thread colors for her. Um, she's got a really beautiful Adam and Eve, um, a pretty neat snake on there. You can see him. He's winding up the top part of that tree. Beautiful hearts. Um, beautiful deer. A great border. Uh, this is just a gorgeous sampler. And it's a morbidity verse. And we'll talk a little bit about morbidity verses um, when we publish this one. 
So this one is slated for October. And the reason why it's going to come out in early October is because it's my wedding anniversary. And so because of the beautiful hearts, I really want to, um, you know, celebrate with this one. So somebody asked a question in the comments about when we lace things, what do we lace them to? Well, this is a great example, and I wanted to show it to you tonight because it's out. You can see where the antique is, and you can see it was, it's in beautiful shape, the part that's um, there, although some of the satin stitches are missing, frayed, but that's okay. Most everything else is there, and that just happens over time. But the edges look pretty, pretty poor. But they're not horrible. I've seen a lot worse. And you can see the selvage here, the blue line. That's a selvage line. And this was a selvage over here. Um, <clears throat> and so what we did is we wrapped a piece of foam core in another piece of linen. And then we attached this, we sewed it, sewed on the top. We sewed it to this other piece of linen. And then this other piece of linen is wrapped around a piece of foam core. And so this is acid-free foam core. And you can get that at your framer shop, <clears throat> which is where I would suggest you get it because they'll cut it exactly the size you need it. Or you can get it at a big box shop, but it's acid free. And you need to make sure that it's acid free. And you can see this one was taped with acid free tape. And it's really irrelevant to the sampler itself because it's on another piece. This is the backing linen. This is not the actual sampler. Um, and so this actual antique lays on top of you know, another piece of linen, which by its nature is acid-free. And that piece of linen is attached to an acid-free foam core with some tape. It could have just as easily been laced, but there was no point to lace that, that linen um, to stretch it. And you'll notice that the antique itself is not stretched real tight. Um, it's fragile, as you can see from the edges of it. And so we just tacked it down. And it sits inside a beautiful um, matted frame. And I mentioned in one of the times that we talked that sometimes you have to mat things to cover up nail holes or if you have kind of ragged edges like that. But they are quite beautiful to see them out. This one is just stunning. So this is a really special one. Marianne was eight. We know things about her. Nicola um, actually acquired this sampler before us, and we bought it from her. But she had done a little bit of research, and so we know that Marianne lived to be 80 years old. And we have um, a picture of her tombstone. Um, so you can do some wonderful research online now. And if you guys are lucky enough to acquire an antique sampler, you inherit it through your family, that's great if you do that. You definitely want to get some information on it. Um, or if you acquire it uh, somewhere else, you know, sometimes you can get lucky and find some things. If you know the full name of the girl and the age that she was when she stitched it and the year that it was finished, sometimes you can find some things, um, which is great. So Marianne will be coming in October. Mary Good is here. I forgot to show you, when you when you buy Mary Good from us, if you kid her, if you just buy the chart, um, this doesn't happen, but if you buy fabric or threads from us, actually, I think we're giving this away. I can't remember now if it goes with the chart, but it definitely goes with the fabric and threads. So we had a custom needle nanny made for Mary Good, and it's from the middle, and it has um, the little verse on it. So this is free when you buy the kit from us. Uh, so we're super happy about that, and we're glad to give it to you. We hope you enjoy it. Um, so yeah, so Mary Good, we didn't know a lot about. I mentioned that before. Mary Ann Frayne, we know a little bit about, and we'll, you know, we want to save some of that though for when we actually release her, so that there's something to read about in the um, in the booklet, which will be neat. So those are the sampler chat for today. Um, I wanted to show you something kind of neat. Uh, this little guy here, probably some of you have seen him because we've had him now for, mm, I don't know, maybe four or five months. But uh, Nikki of Nikki's Creations did a beautiful swan for market. I think it was last year and she might have did something different the year before. But for the last couple of years she's had a beautiful thread keep. You see it has holes up here to put your flosses in. And she designed a design for the inside of hers and so I just really loved what she did and I asked her if she would do a custom one for us and so she actually created this beautiful design and this is her fabric 
and then she went to a friend of hers in France and Nikki is Italian from Italy um, and she had a, a friend in France who actually created and hand painted all of the thread keeps themselves the wooden thread keeps the squirrels that's what the back looks like and Nikki actually made this one for us it was a gift and so we had I think I want to say 250 of these um, custom made for us and included with it is the fabric and the threads um, that Nikki put in there for it so when these guys are gone they're gone <laughs> there just won't be any more they were originally priced at $50 which was the right price for them we um, have since reduced them to $40 just to make them a little more attainable so you know if you want one of these and you don't have one a lot of people have them um, you know definitely uh, drop one of those in your cart they're just they're just really beautiful little treasures um, and we just love the way the squirrel turned out so we're pretty happy with him and thank you Nikki for doing that for us we love him this is this is what the package looks like and so you can see that it it comes with a thread you know paper thread keeping the thread and the fabric is in there so pretty neat um, that's that's really about all I had to talk with you today about um, well somebody asked me let's see I answer another question we talked about the foam core somebody asked me what you lace the sampler on to and it was foam core and, and you got to see that on the back of this <clears throat> um, somebody asked me about travels and uh, so you know I really had not been out of the US until I want to say the year 2000 not much went on a honeymoon but I am I'm an accountant by trade I'm a CPA and I had a job that I needed to travel with and so I did some traveling for that company I went to Europe a lot and I ended up living in Holland for um, a little over a year off and on I was over there a few years um, staying in hotels three or four weeks at a time I spent my 35th birthday over there um, living in Holland in an apartment on the Moss River <clears throat> and I'll tell you a really neat story I don't think I've told this story before or if I have forgive me um, but the first night in my apartment when I moved to Holland it was the weekend I flew over a little early so I could get acclimated and of course my luggage was lost so I had to go buy clothes and that was <clears throat> painful to say the least but I was living in Rotterdam which is a little bit south of Amsterdam and um, it was the very first night and I had this little apartment my my complex was literally right on the Moss River which is a beautiful river um, that runs through um, the Netherlands runs through Holland and um, I don't know how much you might know about World War II but Rotterdam was and still is I think the largest port in Europe and it was leveled during World War II they just really bombed it um, really bombed it and so most of the buildings there are relatively new they're not old buildings like you see in most of Europe um, because it just got leveled uh, they did save Amsterdam. Amsterdam really wasn't bombed, but Rotterdam took, took all the hits from that because it was the port. So this huge river is one of the inlets, and it has a lot of shipping and stuff on it. But in my part of it, it's just a really beautiful river. And so I went out on my little balcony on the first night with a glass of wine, and I was sitting out on the little balcony, and I hear music. And it was familiar music. And Krista Kramer's going to love this. Um... And across the river from me was a huge, um, you know, stadium. I don't know what they call those things, the big monster ones. And the Rolling Stones were playing over there. Um, and they were so loud that I could hear everything. And so I sat on my, out on my little deck my very first night um, living overseas and listened to a concert from the Rolling Stones. So it was like the coolest first night ever. It was great. Um so pretty neat so that's one little travel story i've got a lot of those but uh anyway i hope you guys have a fabulous weekend if you watch this before the weekend and you know if you if you see it later i hope you have a great one i i do have one more little trick i want to do i am um, i want to give you something i have to remember where i put it now ah. imagine that I'll put it way over here hold on okay so I'm going to talk about this. Um, we talked about hoops last time. We talked about Hardwick Manor hoops. And um, 
I had some things ordered that came in after that video. One of them is this hoop, and I love this hoop. It is a, an oval hoop, and these hoops come in two sizes. Right now, we just have this one, but we'll get the other one in. And this is six inches by three and a half inches, and it's oval. Um, it's, it's expensive because it's bent, um, and I, it, it, it clearly it takes more skill in manufacturing as well to get um, an oval hoop and it has a really cool you can see this the apparatus on the on the screw there pretty neat um, and I did mention in one of the last videos or post or something that um, that the screw that uh, that we have as a replacement won't fit the oval hoops um, this is a longer screw than what we have but we'll get some of these too now that we have the hoops um, but this hoop is just beautiful and I want one of you to have it. Um, it's, it's kind of an expensive hoop. Um, so it might not be for everybody to buy it. And if you guys do decide to buy it, you know, I hope you love it. And if it's out of your price range, don't feel bad about it. Buy the one that you can afford because they're all great hoops. Um, even the round ones, the square ones, they're just wonderful hoops. So, you know, don't beat yourself up about, about that buy the one that you can afford and that you love and uh and use it and enjoy it um but this one i'm going to give away so in the comments don't write the word giveaway just write the word hoop um something uh, something about the hoop and we will um in a random draw we'll give this one away in the next video and i hope you treasure it and i hope you love it and if you guys out there haven't had a chance to stitch with a Hardwick Manor hoop, you really should. And you know, one of the one of the things I, I did not mention in my last video was we talked about wrapping the hoop and I showed you how to wrap it and I told you a few different things you could use to wrap it. The twill tape that we um, sell with these, and I really do suggest that if you buy the hoop, you buy the twill tape, um, has a little bit of stretch to it. And that's one of the advantages of the twill tape versus using something else to wrap. Um, is that you get really nice um, tight wrapping on it because of that little bit of give and stretch. Um, this is a thin hoop, um, which means you would use the thin tape and or the thin twill tape for it. So the person that wins this will also get the tape, and I hope they go back and watch my little video about how to wrap it. Um, so good luck. Good luck with that. And uh, whoever gets it, I know you're going to love it. Um, it'll have a happy home. It's a lifetime hoop. When people buy these hoops, I tell them that, you know, this is a, this is something you can pass down. Um, and so anyway, a great hoop. So thanks for watching again. If you haven't subscribed, I hope you do. We would appreciate it. And, you know, definitely leave me any comments. Let me know how the sound was this time. Hopefully that's better. Um, and just have a great week and spend some time with stitching friends if you can at all manage that. So thanks a lot for stopping in and listening to me ramble and um, feel free to ask me other questions and things you might want to see. I do have some other things that I'm planning on doing so I'll get those worked in um, in some of the next upcoming videos. Bye! Have a good weekend. Hi! I'm super excited. So I've done all of the um, collection of the comments and names and numbered them and done the random number generator and we have lots of winners so um we gave away five of these lovely new charts and the winners of this are patty t faith Broilick, b-r-a-u-l-i-k sorry about the southern accent <laughs> nancy Kloss, carol merck and flossitute susie <laughs> so i love that last one um so you guys all need to send me um, an email. You can send it to sassyjackstitchery at gmail.com. Put in the subject line of the email that you won a chart um, so that we can get your shipping information and get it out to you. And obviously, if I already have your shipping info, I will go ahead and send it out. But some of you, I don't. So if you don't mind to let me know that, that'd be great. And then one lucky person won... Um, this beautiful fabric from Isabel, so Ocean and Sky fabric, and um, that winner is Rebecca Rays, R-E-Y-E-S, so congratulations to everybody, again it was Patty T, Faith Broilick, Nancy Klaus, Carol Merck, and Flostitute Susie for Mary Good, and Rebecca Rays for the Ocean fabric, so yay, congratulations 
Um, so I'm glad you won and thank you so much for all the feedback and all the comments and I hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye.